All right, guys. So here we're gonna go over a lot of effective patterns for Great Lakes Steelhead and what time of year they work the most. So I'm gonna go right to my favorite pattern here. Is gonna be a stone fly nymph, which is represents a caddis larvae, which is in the creek for 12 months a year. So the caddis larvae that I use, they're extremely, extremely effective when the water's low and clear. Um, I mean, whichever way you do it is cool to me. Center pin, whatever. Fly fishing is just how I picked it up and how I started. But when the water's really low and clear, fly fishing can have the advantage of everything, especially with these stone fly nymphs. When the, they're very good when the water's clear, when the water's got a little bit of a stain to it, they work. But fall, winter, and spring, these stone fly nymphs right here are extremely effective, especially the black patterned ones. They just represent the caddis larvae the best. I mean, a few of the other ones will work. I mean, the bigger stone fly nymphs will work, but the little black patterns are definitely the best pattern. And then we're gonna move to the fall steelhead just when they come up and they start to feed. So when you're fishing for steelhead in the fall, one of the most effective patterns is definitely a white bead headed woolly bugger. Um, represents a minnow. It stands out when the water's a little bit murky and uh, they absolutely love it. Blacks and browns will also work very effective, but I've came to see that white is definitely the best pattern. Um, I mean, the steelhead is what will happen, because you've got to pay a lot of attention, because they're going to hit this fly to kill it. So they're going to hit it very hard. They'll do that to stone flies, they'll do it to white woolly buggers. I'm st I still consider myself a, beginning, a beginner for steelhead fishing, but these patterns are extremely effective if you're just trying it out. Now we're going to move to the springtime when the steelhead are spawning. Now, when the steelhead are spawning, some of them, you know, they'll still be hanging out in the deeper pockets, and that's when I really, really, again, like to use the caddis larvae stone fly nymph. But if you see a female steelhead on a rod and there's males behind it, the males are getting aggravated because they can't, you know, do their business with the female. The, definitely the most effective pattern is the egg sucking leech, without a doubt. Um, this represents some kind of leech in the creek that will attack their nest, this pattern right here. Um, egg sucking leech is by far the best pattern in the springtime. The males will absolutely destroy it, and in a way the females will take it if you only catch the females. I have caught and still had on egg sucking leeches in deeper pools, but when you could see the fish and they're spawning, um, I don't fish browns a lot, but I heard it's very, very effective for brown trout, and uh, that's that's definitely the, definitely the best pattern in the spring. But also when you're fishing in the spring, if you have an olive bugger, um, whites don't seem to be as effective in the springtime, but if you have a black, a brown, I caught my biggest male steelhead, an 11 pounder on brown, brown beadhead bugger, those are extremely effective. Now, I'm, for some reason, not a big egg pattern guy. Um, I've been time, there's been times I've gone out with an egg pattern, you know, didn't catch anything, I'm thinking if I used anything else I would have caught a fish. It's just me, I know a lot of guys are catching my egg patterns, but for some reason, I don't know if it's the creeks I fish, I never have luck with egg patterns. But, my buddy, one of my buddies caught his first steelhead on a spinning rod in a split shot, and he's using a sucker spawn. Uh, I do know some people who fish sucker spawns and know how to fish them do extremely well when it comes to king salmon, when it comes to brown trout, and when it comes to steelhead. But when the water is stained, that's when your sucker spawn is going to be the most productive, for sure. And then if you're going to an Ontario tributary, you could do Erie trips, but mostly Ontario trips, and the browns are just done spawning, or um, there's still a few late run king salmon up, um, this little bead right here that represents a brown trout egg is going to be very effective, maybe even more effective than buggers and uh, your nymphs here. And it's okay, that's fine. Now, a lot of times the most important thing people say while nymph fishing for steelhead is match the hatch, which means if there's a nymph or some kind of stone fly or caddis larva that's hatching in the creek, you have to match the same exact fly, which is very correct. I'm not extremely intelligent when it comes to the nymph species hatching in the creek, but these scud patterns right here, the little nymphs hatch in the spring, and this is when they could be extremely productive, when you have late run steelhead that are holding in pockets when they're ready to exit up to the lake as soon as they can get a big rain scup patterns can work really well um for me because i'm not very good about it when it comes to the nymphs i just use a caddis larvae stonefly pattern i mean during the year all year round 
you don't have to doubt what time of the year, you know, you're throwing this nymph. And that's another thing you can use in the spring. Now for beginners, the most the biggest mistake I've ever seen while fly fishing is whether you're sight fishing, and I, if you're not a beginner, you're gonna have this down no problem. If you find a spot where you know there's fish holding, what you wanna do, I'm guilty of this my first week of scale fishing, I've only been doing it for a few years, is you wanna get your fly way up ahead of the fish, and you wanna mend, so your fly slows down, and you start to get right in front of his face. Because, I mean, if I went to the Oak Orchard River the other day, um, steelhead, even if I was getting it way above them and the browns were absolutely very spooky when they saw the woolly buggers, that's when your stoneflies really, really come into play. But that's really the biggest thing, is just to get your fly way ahead of the steelhead to make sure it's perfectly presented. Now, flies in the time of the year are extremely important, and if you're not an expert steelhead fisherman, and you work the, work the tributaries really hard, use the right fly at the right time of the year, and you present it to the steelhead perfectly, you're definitely going to get hooked into some fish. So, I hope you guys will go out and have a lot of luck.